Hi, I'm Ksenia and welcome to Guiding Star Astrology. I'm your Astro Weather Girl here with this week's Astro Weather Report. I'm going to show you how the stars are going to affect your life this week. In my videos, I use both Vedic and traditional Western techniques with tropical astrology, not sidereal astrology. I also use the traditional system of whole sign astrology for my analysis. You can use this video to the best of your advantage by listening to the introduction to understand what the week holds for you and then going to the timestamps for your sun, moon and rising sign to get a more personalized forecast for the week ahead. Astrology is not designed to scare you. It's designed to give you information so that you know what the good and the challenging energies in the week ahead will be and you can therefore consciously work with them to the best of your advantage. Remember, knowledge is power. Now there are scammers about and so if you should receive a message from me on any platform requesting your money for a reading, know that it is a scam. Report them immediately. And now settle in and let's see what the astral skies have in store for the week ahead. Hello my beautiful astro family here on YouTube. It's lovely to be back with you after taking a couple of weeks off. Lovely to be back on YouTube sharing with you what is coming up for the week ahead and we're looking at the 18th of May through to the 25th of May. What's going on and my goodness what an empowering week it's going to be. I can't wait to tell you all about it. Before I do, I just have to give a big shout out to my friend Lee Winter, who has sent me a beautiful parcel recently with a whole lot of gorgeous earrings that she makes. And these are some of them that I'm wearing for you now, stunning yellow earrings. You'll be seeing a lot more of Lee's amazing work over the coming weeks. But I wanted to say hi to Lee, thank you to Lee, and encourage everybody to check out Lee's work on Instagram. So Lee Winter and you want to look up her Instagram which is designs by Lee L W -E, e W I N T E R designs by Lee Winter. Um, check it out. Thank you Lee. What a beautiful gift. It was such a surprise to receive that in the mail and I'm absolutely thrilled. All right my friends here is the chart of the week and we are going to dive straight in. On the 18th of May Venus is going to be making a conjunction down here with Uranus. Now, whoa, let me, let me just get this up where people can actually perhaps see it a little clearer up higher on the chart there. Um, what this is going to, here we are, Uranus and Venus. Oh, golly gee. This annual conjunction of these two absolutely fascinating planets is really going to bode well if you're interested in the online dating scene. Uranus rules things online and Venus is dating and love and romance. But be aware, my friends, if you are actually looking for new love, this transit doesn't usually bring affairs that last or endure for the length of time, but rather it gives um, love affairs that help us get our mojo back, help us get back on the horse, so to speak, after a time of tumbleweeds. So for one for armed about how that's going to work. Now, if you're in a relationship, then this is a wonderful energy for getting some electricity back into your connection. Um, you know, do something surprising for your partner, do something convention, unconventional, not conventional, unconventional, something out of the ordinary with your loved one under this energy on the 18th of May and you will experience the blessed consequences. Lovely energy for doing something exciting, something shocking, something romantic and out of the blue. Because this is an energy of excitement that bubbles in the areas of love and even the areas of finance and money as well. It's an energy for shaking things up. No more stagnation with these uh, topics of love and money. And this can prove liberating for your hip pocket or your contacts list. So it's a great energy to refi revise your budget, um, a great energy to look at your investments and sort of reconsider your investments and also the connections that you have in your life and make any changes that you feel are necessary. Trust your intuition on these matters and you won't go wrong. Venus conjunct with Uranus. Happens once a year. Enjoy my friends. But also on this same day we've got the Sun here will be in a conjunction with Jupiter. All happening all at once. What a busy day. The 20th, sorry, the 18th of May is going to be. But Sun conjunct Jupiter 
is a day of joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. This is what we sometimes refer to as the luckiest transit of the year. Once again, this one is upon us and aren't we all so, so grateful. We feel optimistic, we feel joyful, not to mention luck is on our side on the 18th. So we might get some compliments from somebody that really boosts our spirits. We might get some gifts, especially surprise gifts with Venus and Uranus in conjunction. And we might feel an energy of thoughtfulness flowing our way. In equal measure, be sure to give those things out to people as well. Give your compliments, give gifts, even if it's just, you know, a flower that you've picked from your garden that morning. Give the gift of thoughtfulness and kindness to others under this energy. It's a benevolent, uplifting energy that's good for all humanity. Keep your eyes peeled also for opportunities and chances to grow in all areas of your life with this energy. Coupled with the Venus conjunction with Uranus, Jupiter with the Sun can give you the chance to grow financially, the chance to grow romantically, the chance to just expand your life career-wise. Jupiter with the Sun can do that. It is a chance to see life flourishing in almost every area. So the 18th of May in America, the 19th of May in Australia and other parts of the world near Australia, it's going to be such a good energy to enjoy. We've got this monster stellium here um, of one, two, three, four, five planets in Taurus, really putting emphasis on the Taurian energy um, and what that house represents for you in your chart. We'll experience the joy and expansion and abundance of this combination. Moving along, on the 20th of May, we're going to see the sun moving into the sign of Gemini. And when the sun's in Gemini for 30 days, it's a great time to express ourselves because we can now use words and gestures to help us shine our natural charisma. That's what happens. The, the Gemini energy is words and gestures. The sun is our natural charismatic self and our confidence. So they come together and combine. Gemini is a mutable energy. So this whole next 30 day period is all about flexibility and change. If you can maintain your adaptability with the circumstances of your life, you won't go wrong. You cannot lose. It's also an energy for having our thinking stimulated over the next 30 days. So you might find that you're more curious than usual or that your conversation and words just flow easier. Some of us might feel more restless than usual as well, finding it difficult to put our feet on the ground the way we did last month when the sun was in Taurus. So if you can be forewarned and forearmed about that, you'll, uh, you'll know how to deal with the energy. But it is a bright energy. It is a breezy energy. It's an energy of non-discrimination, just what the doctor ordered for us all on the planet for the coming days. So enjoy. And then on the 22nd, we've got one of the powerhouse energies that forms every year. And this will be the energy that I'll be talking about in the All Signs Breakdown. So I'm going to try and draw a, an angle here from the sun down to Pluto, making a very powerful trine. Sun trine, Pluto. I love talking about this energy. It is a powerhouse. It is an energy that's super potent for impacting other people and creating a positive influence on the world. This end of May is going to be so fantastic for all this good, juicy energy that we need to see manifest, um, given what's been happening in the early part of this year throughout the world. So as within, so without. That's the premise of the old Hermetic principle that pertains to astrology. So our own sense of personal power is going to be enhanced by the sun trying to Pluto. And it causes us to create powerful experiences in our external reality. Now, for some people, this might look like an opportunity to take your power back. For other people, it might give you the opportunity to receive some support from a prominent male figure. Sun is masculine energy. For other people, it might look like some uh, opportunity to initiate a significant transformation to redirect and reorient your life. You, you have a great deal of willpower, a great deal of personal capacity now to change how your life is working for you. Vitality is also represented through this energy. Our vitality is at a peak and it's a great time for expressing ourselves. It's a great time for pursuing our ambitions and seeing um, manifestation come out of our actions. And best of all, 
it's a wonderful time for enhancing and empowering our own personal joy and what brings us happiness, what we love. So enjoy this energy, my friends. It's beautiful. We're going to break it down for all signs very soon. Then on the 23rd of May, there's going to be um, a full moon forming. The moon is uh, going to move around. Whoops. Here we've had it in Virgo. It's going to move around to becoming a full moon in Sag. So I'll pop the moon there just for reference. But this is going to happen um, and I'm going to give an all signs breakdown for this full moon in Sagittarius at two degrees of Sagittarius. I'm going to give an all signs breakdown on my Patreon channel. If you would like to join me there, join up for the month, find out what this full moon in Sagittarius has in store for you. But it marks a culmination point. Full moons represent things winding up in some area of your life. And because this is a, a concluding energy, it's ending something so that something new can begin. You might get a new opportunity to let your confidence shine. You might find that a new adventure is awaiting you in your life and fruiting in your life, expanding your heart, your soul, your mind. It's going to give you a, a, the end of an old paradigm, an old perspective on your life and an ability to see a new big picture forming for your future. Um, it's going to give you a more open-minded approach to living and potentially the end of worry or overthinking and the ability to trust now in the divine plan that's unfolding. So do you have personal planets at the second degree of Sagittarius? Were you born during the night? Well, find out more about how this might influence you, this full moon in Sagittarius, by joining the Patreon family. If you would like to do so, the link is in the description below. Also on the 23rd of May, we have a conjunction over here of Venus and Jupiter at this stage. Another beautiful transit for mid-May to soothe our weary souls. This is an energy that can attract more luck into our life, be that in the form of some financial support or emotional upliftment. For some people, it might represent falling in love and for others, it might be falling in love all over again with our partner. Or it can represent an expansion of our desires, what we, you know, growth of what we hope to see manifest in our life. But it's all for the greatest good right now, all for blessing. These are the two benefic planets. And with this taking place in the sign of Taurus, which is a materially oriented earth sign, um, a once in 12 year event that these two conjunct in Taurus, it will be 12 years before we have a Venus Jupiter conjunction in Taurus again. Um, don't be surprised to see some beneficial material manifestation happening for you in your life regarding where these two are, are taking place with their conjunction. Like, um, for example, if you're an Aries rising, it'll be happening in your second house of money. You might see a lot more money flowing to you on the 23rd of May. If you happen to be a Taurus rising, it's going to be happening in your first house when you'll start to see, uh, you know, benevolence and opportunity and material um, uh, joy, if you like, uh, manifesting with your body and your physical experience. So you might get some new clothes or be able to, you know, get a haircut at a really exclusive hairdresser that you've always wanted to get your hair done at. So it's something to do with the body, the image, the, um, the physical presence is blessed in a material sense. I'm not going to go through every sign, but um, it really depends on where Taurus is situated in your chart, where that material abundance might flow to you and in what realm. Then on May the 23rd as well, Venus, after her conjunction with Jupiter, is going to hop on into Gemini. And what a playful time this can be for lovers of all ages and all walks of life while Venus moves through um, Gemini. Uh, Gemini wants to have fun and Venus adores luxuries and pleasures. What does this equal? Good times. Good times, my friend. We tend to handle love and relationships with more lightness of being when Venus is in Gemini. We're more chatty, we're more open, we're more curious about our partners under this energy. Knowledge gives a sense of delight as well. So during this transit, which is just shy of a month long, we might receive some happy news or learn some valuable information. We might upgrade a life skill that makes our journey more bountiful right now. So my friends, let the breezes of Gemini flow through your love life and your financial affairs and you will find a lot of peace 
very refreshing energy. And finally, after Venus, I'll move her along, Venus moves into Gemini, she is going to be also making a trine down here to the planet Pluto from Gemini. Um, and this is, a, this is another benevolent energy. It's just all benevolence coming our way in late May. Consider the old Hollywood film stars, Marlena Dietrich, Sophia Loren, Marilyn Monroe, Bridget Bardot. What did they all have in common? What were they all known for? their sex appeal. And that is what this combination is all about, Venus, Trine, Pluto. It's, in, it's about an intensity and attractiveness. Pluto um, is intensity, Venus is attractiveness. So the manifestation is we might feel more beautiful, more sexy than we have before under this energy. We can also feel very deeply about one another, deeply passionate about the things we love, be it a person, be it a hobby, be it an interest, be it music, whatever. Our, our intensity and our passion around something precious to us really increases under this energy in, a, in the best way, not an obsessive way, but a really beneficial way. Our desire increases, um, that includes sexual desire, but other desire as well um, in other realms. Our affection, uh, we, we hunger after more affection, we want to give it to people, we want to receive more affection. It is, um, it is actually quite a beautiful energy for having a lot more pleasure and joy in your life on this, the 25th of May. Pluto is the ancient god of wealth and he's doing a dance with Venus, the ruler of finances. And so this can actually see us deeply researching our financial options. Again, as in the start of the week, by the end of the week, it's still a good time to revise your budget or make some secret investments that could pay off uh, in the long term due to this auspicious energy. So do some researching, do some financial investigation, trust your instincts around those things and Venus trying to Pluto can bring financial blessing as a result. So my friends, that is the energies in a brief overview for the week ahead. Very excited about this. Now let's take a look at what is happening um, for all signs regarding the benevolent Sun trine Pluto. So my friends, let us start with Gemini as the first house, of course, because this is where the Sun will be and it's trining Pluto over here in uh, Aquarius. So Gemini rising will have the influence of Sun trine Pluto forming in the first house. Of course, if you have planets or points like your ascendant degree at two degrees of Gemini, you will feel this more strongly than others will. But this is going to give you a very strong willpower, you know, to change your life. If your life has been going down the toilet, you under this energy on the 22nd of May have a great deal of potential willpower and strength of character or energy and vitality, if you like, to turn your life around. And uh, this, is, this is very potent, this energy. There's an ability to turn all obstacles under this combination into success. So maybe your boss is bringing you down or your family or there's something going wrong in your life and the bills are flooding in and things just suck. Well, you have what it takes to figure out solutions and answers to problems. You have the empowerment of Pluto, Trine Sun, to turn those problems, that difficult boss or that family situation or that situation with the bills into uh, success right now. It's a time of transformation. Pluto transforms, the sun represents your own ego and here in the first house of you. Very, very powerful. It's also an energy for attracting what you want. What do you want to attract into your life? What do you want the next six months to look like for you? Well, put that out to the universe now. Script it. Tell the universe what you want. Imagine it happening. Live in that energy. Feel what it feels like to have that dream coming true. And this energy on the 22nd of May can see it set the wheels in motion to change life drastically for you and attract what you want, as I said. It's about setting goals and achieving it. Now here in the house of the body and the physicality, what goals around physical health and well-being and image and body image do you have? This is where we can set some goals and actively achieve it. 
you know, do you want to drop some weight for summer? Do you want to put on some weight where you've been feeling too sort of uh, under underweight? Or have you been feeling run down and exhausted and unhealthy? You could set a goal to have more health and well-being and vitality. What goals do you have around body and health and image that you can set now and see manifest in a, a blessed way with Pluto making a trine to the sun? This is where we can also create some big and lasting changes in our life. And the first house is the house of initiating new things, starting new things. So what do you need to start in your life that's going to cause some big change? Maybe you need to start a new budget and stick to it. Maybe you need to start a new exercise routine. Maybe you want to start a business. Maybe you want to start a new friendship or you maybe you want to turn over a new leaf and a fresh start with a relationship. Where do you want to see some big changes happen? Well, initiate the change. Don't just sit back on the couch and wait for it all to happen to you. Take the initiation. because um, Be on the front foot because the sign of Gemini as the first house in this combination says you've got to take the action. You have to be the one to make the move, to initiate something new. And if you want big lasting change in your life, now's the chance to do it, but you've got to take action. You've got to be on the front foot. So my friends, do you need to, you know, uh, put in for that new job? Do you need to sort of approach your partner and say sorry or, um, you know, initiate some romance if it's been lacking in your life? You know, take the initiative, my friends, and you will not go wrong under this energy. You will be supported by the divine on this day, the 22nd of May. All right, so now we're going to move on and we're going to see Gemini become the 12th house because we're going to be looking at anyone who has Cancer rising, Cancer sun or Cancer moon energy strong in their chart. This is putting the trine on the 22nd of May between Pluto and the sun at 2 degrees of Gemini in your 12th house. If you've got planets at 2 degrees, you're going to feel this even more strongly and this is going to give you a strong will and a tremendous restorative um, ability to overcome behaviors and patterns of psychological behavior that may have been with you for a long time it might even be coming from past life experiences potentially as well in the 12th house but this is one of the psychological houses and if you have felt that you know you're very full of self-sabotaging behaviors always letting yourself down and frustrated by that this day the 22nd of may gives you a power to say no more i'm going to end this we are going to move forward with life and stop you know, uh, tripping ourselves up through our own self-sabotage. This is an energy of being able to turn obstacles into success. So if you have been suffering from a loss in your life during this time, maybe, you know, you've lost a job or maybe you, you've you um, lost a friendship or something, this is the house of loss, then this is an energy that can restore things and turn that difficult situation of loss into a blessing. You know, maybe under this energy, which is very much uh, one where you can initiate something, the sun gives you the power to initiate, you could approach that friendship that you've lost and say, you know, I'm really sorry for what happened and um, can we restore things and it, it can be returned to you. Um, if you've lost a job, you might be able to sort of manifest a new job that you aspire to that might, ha um, you know, fit exactly with who you are so much better than where you were before it's the ability under this this energy on the 22nd of may to turn a difficulty and a situation of loss into something better into a success to, to take something that is sort of been burnt down like the phoenix burnt down in the the analogy of the, the phoenix bird in ashes and being restored to life that's what we're looking at here with this powerful pluto trying to the sun this is also an energy of attracting what we want in life and I would suggest that if you have any daydreams and visions but also night dreams that you would like to see manifest then um, this is the energy to have on your side. So under this energy on the 22nd of May I would take the time to sit down, meditate and imagine or put out there to the universe where you want to be in six months time, 12 months time, five years time, whatever, and you can attract it to you. This is a house of imagination and a house of visioning. 
And so a lot of people, you know, have, we used to be a society where we could do that. We used to be uh, humanity could invest in their visioning processes and manifest what they want in their life. Um, we have lost that tradition, particularly in the West, for the last 2,000 years, and we've become far more focused on logic than we have on the ability to manifest through our own intention and our own uh, power. So I just encourage you, my cancer friends, to use your imagination and the power of your imagination on the 22nd of May to attract what you want, to manifest what you want, and see it happen. But you have to do it intentionally and you have to do it with a visualization process. See yourself already having achieved it, not, not it being out there ahead of you in the future somewhere. See yourself in the position where you are surrounded by the love you want, surrounded by the abundance that you crave, surrounded by the blessings and the friendship or the career that you want. See yourself having achieved something, visualize it, it can manifest with this happening in your 12th house. Now, it could be that some important, powerful person might want to team up with you, but it would likely be somebody from a faraway place, from a foreign culture, someone from overseas who might contact you and say, hey, let's collaborate. Hey, let's do something together. Um, Sun and Pluto energy are both very powerful masculine forces, so it's likely to be a man from far away that might want to sort of uh, collaborate with you on something. Now, this is also an energy of bringing big and lasting change into your life. So a wonderful uh, chance for you to do some alchemy in your life and bring uh, permanent change. Letting go. This is a moksha house, which means liberation. So it's about letting go and dissolving out of your life what you do not want anymore. And what you dissolve out of your life intentionally under this energy will likely never return again. So what is it in your life that you wish was not in your life? Do some visioning around that. Do some prayer around that. Um, put that out there to the universe too and you have a power to manifest the end, 12th house represents endings, the end of something that you don't want in your life as well. Let it go, release it, see it gone and this energy can see that manifestation become a reality or that visioning I should say become a reality. Moving along, we are going to put Gemini in the 11th house and that means Leo will be rising and you can use your sun or your moon placement in Leo and also take this on board as well. This is happening on the 22nd of May, Sun trine Pluto. Sun is at two degrees of Gemini, Pluto is at two degrees of Aquarius and this is, um, if you've got planets at those points, you will feel this all the more strongly. This is the house of profit and gainfulness and you have a tremendous uh, willpower and a high level of ambition to see your dreams come true now. Now I'm not saying that everybody who has goals and aspirations is going to see them suddenly manifest Leo under this energy but what you put in place, what you put in motion on the 22nd of May will have the force of Pluto trine sun behind it and the potential in time to, for something that you dream and aspire to to manifest is enhanced. All the more so because this is what we call an Upachaya house, which means it gets better and better and better with time. The manifestation doesn't come instantly, it comes in time. So make a start. If you have aspired to start your own business or if you've aspired to be gainful through, uh, you know, maybe a rising career or something, then take the steps needed to make that happen. You know, apply for that new job. Start you know, working on your entrepreneurial endeavor, start, um, you know, reaching out to people who you want to connect with and create networks with. If you want to find love, if that's your ambition, then, you know, go and join an internet dating site under this energy. It has a greater potential of manifesting what you want by initiating the beginnings on this day, the 22nd of May under Pluto trine to the sun. We have a greater capacity to attract what we want in life and that usually has something to do in the 11th house with making prosperity and wealth from what we're contributing to the world through our work, through our career, through our aspirations. Um, our dreams I've already talked about and our desires and wishes, we can uh, readily attract more success with our dreams and goals uh, as I've said because of this energy but we can also attract important and powerful people in our life 
who are going to help us achieve what we need. So for some Leo people, you might get some contact or some communication from somebody who can really help give you a leg up to recognition and publicity and success if that's your dream and goal. People in your networks, you know, people in your friendship circles and people that you know might be reaching out to you now to say, hey, I've got this opportunity. Do you want to come on board for this with me? And um, through doing so, you might be able to manifest more success in your life and receive more profit and gainfulness as well. Now, um, this is also an energy where we can have some big and lasting changes occur this week. So in the 11th house, we're talking change that could come to your dreams and goals. Maybe you've always aspired to open a cafe or something like that and that's what you want to do with your life and you just wanted to have your happy little cafe. Well, under this energy, because Pluto is in, involved here, it can mean that that dream is um, broken down and instead you come up with an idea for something even better and it's reborn out of the loss of one dream, a new dream is reborn big lasting changes that are actually better in the long run going to bless you more going to bring more success and more personal satisfaction into your life so you go from aspiring to have you know a little cafe on the corner to maybe I don't know it might be bigger might be better might be having a, a massive chain of cafes and you can see everybody you know in every city across America having that cafe that you've opened there and you're the the owner of a massive chain or franchise for example's sake so there is this wonderful opportunity to make big lasting change and recalibrate if you like your dreams and your goals and your ambitions and actually to attract more of what you want in a bigger better way so love this energy for creating more in the world and more success and prosperity and recognition Thank you, my lovely Leos. Virgo rising, Virgo sun, Virgo moon people. Well, the energy of Pluto trying to the sun is forming at two degrees of Gemini. This is where you're going to feel it in the 10th house on the 22nd of May. And so this is the house of our example to others. You, you, my friends, my beautiful Virgo people have the chance to be a powerful leader in the lives of others. People are going to look to you for guidance, for wisdom, for knowledge. People are going to be really impressed by your charisma and personality. Sun in the 10th house, Pluto making a trine. This is an important energy um, for you to be in a role of leadership, to be recognized and to cre even create a very um, powerful legacy through something that happens on the 22nd of May. So if you would like a, a greater leadership role, maybe you want to be you know, like head of the scouts in, in your town or maybe you want to you know, get on a, a board of some sort or something, this is the time, this is the day to apply for it, to put in for it, go for that job opportunity, whatever. There is a wonderful chance for you to succeed. It's also an energy of setting goals with the ability to achieve it now you you know it's not like you set a goal at nine o'clock in the morning and by two in the afternoon you've achieved your goal no no things take time and this is not an energy for saying time doesn't matter anymore but it is an energy for saying i'm going to take the first steps i'm going to take some initiative to make something happen and so what goals career-wise or out in the world or in a publicly visible sense do you have for example do you have an aspiration to have a very visible glamorous um, home and not everything in the the 10th house is about career it is the opposite the, the fourth house of where we live so it can even relate to that so do you aspire to have a visible glamorous home sun in the 10th house can give us those aspirations well start looking on the real estate pages um, under this energy on the 22nd of May and you might find exactly what you're looking for then you can set in motion the actions that could turn um, you know this this aspiration this goal into a reality now it's not going to happen on the day but you know you might discover that house and then you go and apply for a loan and then you speak to friends who can sort of perhaps give you a deposit or whatever approach you need to take to make it happen to attract this um, this goal uh, for being out there and visible and seen in the world I've used the example of a visible home but it could be a, a more high profile career it could be to take action towards a you know a relationship that you want to see manifest or um, some success you know on YouTube or something could be anything 10th house is of how you are seen and perceived by 
the world out at large out there. So whatever it is that allows you to be seen by the world out la- at large out there through your relationship, your home, your career, your whatever, um, this is the time for taking some initi- uh, taking some initiation or initiating, I should say, um, something to make that goal to be seen in the world happen. Now, um, uh, this is also an energy uh, for powerful people. Pluto is empowerment. Sun is kingly leadership in the 10th house and the sun making a trine, sorry, Pluto making a trine to the sun is going to put very powerful kingly like leaders across your path. So make the most of those, you know, in your connections with those people. Um, you know, honor those connections, appreciate those connections. You might even be given the chance to be a kingly leader yourself in some manner, which I've already talked about. Um, One thing's for certain though, this is a combination that's going to bring lasting changes that can ultimately become a part of your legacy. You know, how you treat other people on the 22nd of May will become part of the legacy that you ultimately leave. How you approach, um, you know, your work, how you approach your boss, how you approach the public is going to ultimately become an important component of the legacy you will leave as a person when your time on earth is done. So act with consciousness, act with awareness, act with grace and consideration of others under this energy. You know, for those out there who act with greed and selfishness, that will end up being part of what you're remembered for, part of the legacy you leave. And who wants to be known as a complete asshole? Nobody I know anyway. So act with consciousness, act with love, act with grace, and it will contribute to the legacy that is being left or that will be left when you depart the planet someday. Thank you, lovely Virgo friends. Okay, Libra rising, Libra sun, Libra moon people. The energy of the sun in a trine with Pluto will be felt in the ninth house for you, very benevolent place. And the sun is at two degrees of the sign of Gemini, which will mean that if you have planets around two degrees of Gemini, you're going to feel this very, very strongly. And even if your rising degree is two degrees of Libra, you might also feel this as well because it will be making a a grand trine between Pluto, the sun and your ascendant. And that will be very, very powerful for our Libran friends who've got that. Well, the ninth house is communication with the gods. So my Libran friends, it's time to pray. It's time to meditate. It's time to put your dreams and aspirations before the heavens under this energy. And the heavens will hear. The divine will hear under this energy because the ninth house is the house of communicating with the divine. So um, it, it is also the, the realm of the chart that has to do with purpose and mission and what gives our life meaning. What is it that gives your life meaning, my beautiful Libra and friends? Ponder this, perhaps write in your journal about it, and then recognize that the, the trine from Pluto to the sun can give you the ability to manifest whatever that meaning might be. This is a highly manifesting energy. It forms once a year. It it doesn't always form in the same sign. In fact, this is the first time that um, this energy has formed in your ninth house. Um, For the last 14 years, it's been forming in your eighth house. So what a change this is going to bring, this uh, um, this aspect from Pluto to the sun. And and so it's going to bring big and lasting changes to your purpose, your mission. And like I said, what gives your life meaning? So think about it. What is it that makes your life meaningful? Maybe it's being a mum. Maybe it's having a high-flying career. Maybe it's being, you know, what gives your life meaning is being self-sufficient and, you know, having an independent source of resources. Whatever it is that gives your life a sense of meaning, you have a massive power under this energy to achieve it. You know, you want to be a great mum, you can really do it uh, by what you set in motion on the 22nd of May under this energy. You want to create your own self-sufficient resources, Libra? Buy words, get out there and and sow that vegetable garden and set up that rainwater tank and, and, you know, solar panels or whatever it is and, and get things happening, get the things in motion because you have a great ability to set up your own self-sufficient life (laughs) under this energy if that's what gives life meaning and purpose for you so you've got to know what it is to see it manifest that's the only thing I would uh, I would just caution against there it's no use having no idea what your purpose and meaning is because then nothing will come of it 
So have, uh, you know, have that clear in your mind by the 22nd of May, what it is that gives your life a sense of meaning and sense of purpose. It's also the realm of the chart that's about our future visions and our goals as well. And this energy of Sun trine Pluto is all about setting goals and having the willpower and strength to achieve them. So again, it comes back to what gives our life purpose and meaning. What are your goals for life? The big picture we're talking about here. What, what is the, the vision that you have? Put it in motion, set it going. This is also the house of good karma because it's the fifth house from the fifth. The fifth house is the house of good karma from past lives and the ninth house is like double whammy, fifth house, blessing, fifth house from the fifth. So, um, you know, you can actually receive a lot of support from the divine under this energy. Very lovely for our Libra and friends. Also, important inspirational and powerful men usually because the sun and Pluto are masculine energies might manifest in your life. You might be, you know, receive some contact from a man or a father figure um, who wants to sort of back you up in something or support you or help you in some way. Don't, sh don't sort of, you know, poo-poo that. That's, that's actually a gift from the divine if that should happen to you. Now, it may be a father figure, it could be a judge, it could be, um, you know, a religious leader, somebody in a sort of a, a high level or a university lecturer, somebody with a, a lot of life experience and wisdom, somebody probably in that sense a little bit older than you, um, can give you some benefits, some guidance, some wisdom that you want to pay attention to under this energy, Libra. Um, finally, the, the ninth house has to do with other cultures, other practices, you know, um, ceremonial practices, celebrations and so forth, and also represents long distance travel. So there can be big changes that you experience on the 22nd of May, Libra, around creating an experience in another culture. You might be booking airplane tickets or making plans to travel. Um, there might be an opportunity that is presented to you to, to travel overseas or experience another culture in some way. And in doing so, it can really change your life in an important and powerful way. So yeah, then if you've been thinking about traveling, if you've been thinking about maybe visiting some exotic restaurant or something, do so on the 20 or book it, uh, book the tickets or go and to the restaurant or whatever it happens to be on the 22nd of April, uh, May. And uh, it's likely to change your life in an impactful, lasting way that brings blessing because of the energy of Pluto and Sun in trine. Thank you, Libra. Scorpio rising, Scorpio sun and Scorpio moon people. The energy of the sun in a trine with Pluto will be felt in the eighth house. And especially so if you happen to have planets at two degrees of Gemini. So this is a, a very powerful time for our lovely um, Scorpio people where they might see some serious massive change occur in life of a benevolent nature. Usually we think crisis when we think eighth house, we think, you know, things being torn down and that kind of thing, but not with the Pluto trying to the sun energy. It's a time of change for the better and rapid change. This is fast energy. It's not pokey and slow. This is about saying, I want this. And by the end of the day, boom, it's landed in your lap. So very powerful, very swift change and um, restoration. If you felt like your life is going to the juice and that you're caught in some sort of crisis circumstance, this is an energy that can get you out of it. So I would encourage you to pray. I would encourage you to do meditative work and imaginative visioning. Um, it could also be very beneficial for you to do some sort of mystical healing work, like getting a Reiki um, session or doing some sort of psychological session or seeing an astrologer on this day, the 22nd of May. Um, it's even very positive for getting surgery if you need surgery um, on the 22nd of May with this energy forming. But see a shaman, see some sort of a alternative um, shamanic pr practitioner and you could see your life really transform uh, in some way. It's an energy for getting out of a rut big time. So if you've been stuck, if you've been feeling like life has no momentum, you're not moving forward, um, this energy is going to bring somebody across your path, maybe a powerful healer type of person, um, maybe somebody with a lot of uh, wisdom. Of a, of a more Gnostic sort of esoteric variety of wisdom across your path that could really 
send you on a completely different direction and restore you um, from a, a, a difficult stuck situation that you've been in. Now for some people if you've been going for, through a divorce this energy can be very healing and very supportive you, you can finally understand you know what's going on like you know sometimes when you're in a divorce you can feel like life's very confusing and you're a bit lost this is an energy of clarity around the the sort of crisis situations we go through in life so if you've been going through a divorce you can get some clarity some closure some understanding of what's happening what's going on why things fell apart that sort of thing um, there can also be clarity around any other kind of catastrophes or breakdowns and sort of thing that it, that might have happened in your life in recent times you can get some understanding some insight you get some background information on why things have gone the way they have and sometimes that's just healing in itself to have a, a sense of knowledge it can set us free um, this is the house of what we receive from others and you can really attract a lot of support from other people with this energy forming for the first time in your life in the eighth house you know um pluto trying to the sun for the last 14 years has been having a field day in your, in your seventh house but this energy is actually saying no no now it's moved to the eighth house so this is the first time in your life that you're going to be able to sort of attract what you want in an eighth house manner that could be an inheritance it could be some sort of moral support or um, emotional support that you crave in your life some payout that you've been hanging out for um, this is the house like I said of what we receive from others so some of you Scorpio people are likely to receive some sort of a benefit from others in some way um, yeah some renewal is likely to happen renovation of the soul renovation of the spirit too many of you Scorpio people will have uh, like very powerful sexual experiences now if you're in a, a partnership what a gift this is to the partnership if you are um, in a situation where you, you maybe have some kind of a sexual encounter and it will usually be self like desired not not one that's sort of unwanted and um, with the sun in the eighth house it's very much about you and you wanting that sexual encounter it could be very cathartic it could take you to another sort of spiritual plane even through a sexual interaction that might form so very very powerful energy whatever happens could actually result in bringing lasting change into your life financially emotionally um, and with your ability to um, to roll with the punches and be adaptable and flexible you, you might have been very like you are a, a fixed rising sign so you might have been a bit a bit reluctant to change or adverse to sort of um, going with the flow along comes this energy of Pluto trying to the sun in your eighth house and suddenly become far more flexible and adaptable and life tends to flow so it's a lovely energy for us all thank you Scorpio Sagittarius rising sun and moon people the energy of the the sun and a trine to Pluto is forming in your seventh house of relationship Sagittarius and if you have planets and all your descendant degree at two degrees of Gemini you're going to feel this all the more Sagittarius this energy gives you a strong willpower and a restorative willpower to make relationships flourish beautiful energy so if you have been in a, a partnership could be a business partnership could be a marriage where things have been a bit sort of sticky a bit stuck in a rut a bit not moving forward you know you're wondering whether it's even worth staying in it this energy can help heal a relationship rut um, and bring it back to life again beautiful beautiful energy um, this also includes any relationship with the public with other people with clients with your audience if things have been a bit you know on the downer this energy can lift you up like a phoenix from the ashes um, so really really good if you've had some obstacles and you're let's say you're a Sagittarius person who is single and looking for partnership this energy can see all the obstacles fall away you know maybe you've been wanting to approach somebody at work or somebody that you know maybe a cute guy who gives you coffee every morning at the local cafe and, and that you just feel like inhibited or you don't have the courage to say anything that can all fall away under this energy you have willpower you have an ability to turn perceived obstacles 
into nothing. They all fall away and dissolve. So, you know, relationships can flourish under this energy, whether you're single, whether you're married, you can heal a relationship, you can establish a relationship, you can start a connection. It is a beautiful energy. Now, of course, to start a connection, you actually really need a lot more than just this particular trine forming. You need other sort of things triggering your chart. But this is a good thing um, and one of the contributing factors to help relationship form. It's all about having good interactions with other people, you know, deep interactions, intense interactions, because that's the nature of Pluto, but in a positive sense. So you'll feel, you know, an intimate connection with uh, your significant other under this energy. Um, this is the house of how we perceive others, how we treat others and what we attract from other people. You're going to attract empowerment from other people. You're going to in attract support from other people. Um, you're going to attract an energy of lifting you up just as you'll be able to treat others that way by lifting them up and blessing them. So keep your eyes peeled Sagittarius. You're going to get opportunities to be benevolent. Take them. It creates good karma. It creates good juju in your life to be kind, to be gracious, to be compassionate. You'll get opportunities to do so. You should run with it under this energy. This is also, my friends, about setting goals and being able to achieve it. So if you, you know, have a goal to um, have a better relationship or to be in partnership or this is a house of contracts to sort out a contractual situation. If you have a goal to create a, a positive contractual situation in your life, then you can actually achieve it through whatever you instigate, whatever you undertake on the 22nd of May when this energy forms. Um, it's, it's really about finding that, you know, powerful and influential people will cross our path on this day, team up with us and bring blessing into our life. Powerful people are represented by Pluto in a trine with the sun, kingly people. So you, it might be relational, but it could also be that you encounter somebody, maybe a client who just thinks you're the best astrologer in the world and they put it all out there across their extensive social networks. You've got to see this astrologer, they're fantastic. This podcaster, what a ripper, they're fantastic too. Go and see these people. Somebody is promoting you. Somebody is shining a light that illuminates you and you stand to benefit from that. This is an energy of an important, powerful person giving you blessing. What a gift. What a gift. So Sagittarius, enjoy that. Keep your eyes on your email. Keep your eyes on your post box. Your post box. You might receive some kind of beneficial contract in the mail or um, you know, a message saying, hey, we want to interview you or come in for this job interview or something like that. Very powerful energy for success that's come from another person. But one thing that this does is bring beneficial big and lasting change to the realm of relationship. And this is good news for those of us who've been struggling in a business deal or a, um, a marriage. Um, it's good news if we've been single and we want to see things change. It's good news if we're in a contractual situation that you know we want to get out of or we want to alter in some way. We can make the changes that we need in our life that get us back on track. I love this energy. Enjoy my Sagittarius friends. It's going to be a blessing coming from other people to you. All right. Um, Capricorn rising, Capricorn sun and Capricorn moon people puts the energy of Pluto in a trine to the sun um, in uh, being felt in the sixth house. Now I'm just going to hold that still. So the sun's down here at two degrees of Gemini. What this means is if you have planets or points of significance at two degrees of Gemini, you're going to feel this all the more and it's going to manifest in mostly a sixth house manner. This is actually a good energy to have in the sixth house Capricorn. Why? Because it's going to give you a strong willpower and an ability to restore your life if your health has been damaged. You know, if you've been struggling with a health issue, this is a time when you can make changes that benefit your health and well-being. Maybe you've had a sore back from sitting all the time at work and you start doing yoga on this day, 
lo and behold, in the long term, it's going to turn your life around. Maybe you start doing breath work. Maybe you start eating better. Maybe you start getting more sleep. You start doing something that's of benefit to your health and well-being on the 22nd of May when this forms, and it's going to change your life powerfully because of the trine from Pluto. You might find that you encounter some sort of beneficial healer as well. Usually it will be a man because this is a masculine energy, the sun and Pluto. And it could be a man that helps helps you or shines a light on a problem. Now, it could be like a health practitioner, absolutely. But it could also be maybe uh, somebody who helps you get out of debt, somebody who helps you get some form of education that's going to enable you to move forward. Somebody who helps reduce the imbalances in your life in some way and imbalances in any area, in education, in finance, in resources, in health and well-being. It's, it's an energy for some usually masculine person helping you turn your life around in a powerful way and helping you overcome problems, helping you overcome struggles that you're experiencing. This is a house of healing through practical means. And so it, it can also indicate that there's an illumination and an empowerment of practical areas that you can make change to in your life to help you live a better life. For example, if you're living in a cluttered home environment, this energy is going to empower you to do a big spring clean, you know, sort things out, tidy up that pantry. And it means that life just runs better in an everyday reality for you. Um, this is also the realm of the chart that has to do with the conditions of our workplace. There's an illumination here that will show you where things are not functioning well and not flowing efficiently in the workplace where you can make change. And of course, this is an energy that brings lasting change, big change. So maybe it's something in your daily routine or, da or the way you process things at work or at home. And you make a change to your routine or your habit or how you're doing your work. You make a change to how you're relating to your work colleagues and that sort of thing. And it just changes everything. It makes you more efficient. It, it, it puts you in a good light. Your boss recognizes you. Big changes bring big results in the sixth house for a better everyday life. Um, I love this. Now, under this energy, um, I would also suggest that it's a really good time to initiate and start some sort of karmic um, burning, burning of karma. Um, and, and to burn karma, we serve. So I would suggest for my Capricorn friends, look for ways to serve. How can you serve other people? How can you help other people? How can you heal the lives of other people? When you do so, there is a very powerful force at work on the 22nd of May that's going to help you burn karma. The more shitty karma that you burn, the more good karma bubbles up in its place. So, you know, if somebody needs a helping hand, if you can give somebody a lift to work or if you can do something kind for your next door neighbor who's struggling in some way in life, get into it. Be compassionate on this day. It's going to benefit you and it's going to be a gift to others. You know, I often think, Capricorn, if only we would get our eyes as humans off ourselves and look for ways to help and heal and bless other people, the world would turn around overnight. Yes, we need our leaders to start acting that way, but it also needs to start from the grassroots, from the people. Big movements towards healing um, and rest restoration of people's lives, you know. Uh, I could go off on my bandwagon here. I'm going to hold myself back a little bit. But mostly, 90% of people just want to have happy community family lives with enough level of comfort that they're not in a state of stress all the time. And, you know, if everybody was in that kind of situation with decent health, decent income, decent home, um, then the, the, the blessing that would come to the planet would be profound. But it does seem to me that they like to, they, powers that be, like to keep us in a state of suffering as much as possible. Um, and the sixth house pertains to suffering. So my dear Capricorn friends, Look for ways to help restore balance to people in people's lives that are out of balance, you know, to help them have a better home life, family life, better income, better um, health, better well-being. Whatever you can do, do it, because if we can 
overcome the suffering that they impose upon us, then we can actually turn the fate of the planet around completely. Um, all it takes is the willpower which Pluto can give to make a change to the suffering of the, the world and we can see big changes. And that said, there are a lot of people suffering in the world, not just in our immediate vicinity, but in other countries through war, through strife, through challenges. And this is your opportunity, Capricorn. You are the ones tasked with this endeavor to make big and lasting changes to the suffering on the planet right now. So I just encourage you to reach out and do so. It will heal the planet and it will help your good karma to bubble up for the future. All right. Thank you, my beautiful Capricorn friends. And I say that because Pluto will empower you to do so. Aquarius rising, Aquarius sun and Aquarius moon people. Well, the energy of sun trine Pluto is going to be felt for you in the benevolent fifth house this is happening on the 22nd of may and if you have planets at two degrees of gemini you're going to feel it all the more this is such a powerful energy the fifth house is the house of good karma from past lives and pluto is a very karmic planet making a benevolent trine to your fifth house here and the sun in the fifth house you have a tremendous power to access the good karma in your life now my Aquarius friends good karma from past lives if you are kind if you're benevolent if you're compassionate in a past life or even early this life now it can come back to you and bring you blessing and success fantastic some um, Aquarius people will, will receive a higher level of fame this week because of this energy forming in their fifth house and of course this is the first time that this is occurring in your fifth house in your lifetime the trine from Pluto to um, Pluto in your first house to the fifth house. Uh, this this makes it very exciting. You know, how's this going to manifest over the next 20 years as you experience annually the sun in a trine to Pluto? Um, it could see you achieving your creative goals in a beautiful way. It could see you transforming society and being a strong mover and shaker and influencer on society through a level of fame that you mightn't have known before. It can see you attracting what you want that brings you joy. Fifth house is what gives us joy, what we love. And Pluto trying to the sun in the fifth house attracts the things we love, attracts the things that give us joy. So very, very exciting for Aquarius people. This can also help you get in touch with your childlike self. Um, who were you when you were 10, 11, 12 years old? What did you love to do? What gave you joy at that age? Well... This trine can bring you back to that, that state of being. You know, maybe you like drawing. Um, I know when I was 11 and 12, I loved drawing sort of floor plans for houses. And maybe this energy, Aquarius, if that's something that you loved when you were a child, can bubble up in you again. But it could actually be a source of, of success for you. Maybe you decide um, because you, of something that you loved when you were a child, fifth house energy, maybe you love drawing house plans, you can actually you know, decide under this energy, I'm going to go and do a draftsperson's course and become you know, maybe a draftsperson or an architect and it can absolutely bless your future. Sun is career. Fifth house is what we loved when we were a child. And Pluto from the first house is empowering this energy. So take some time. Think about what it was you loved when you were a child, Aquarius. What gave you joy? What sort of bubbled up happiness inside you? Well, you can turn whatever that joy was into an avenue for success under this energy. Take the first steps. Take the first um, you know, momentum towards making that happen. Um, you might find that some powerful person comes across your path, some celebrity in the fifth house, or maybe a very important um, child, like a, a child crosses your path who, who has an important message for you, says something, could be your child, they say something at the dinner table and it really hits home and transforms your life. It could be, a, you know, your child's best friend, you're picking them up from school, your child's best friend says something and you're like, wow, profound. Um, what we're seeing here is the Pluto trying to the sun energy in the house of children where children or a child can be a source of change in our lives, life and a, and a source of transformation in our life. So pay attention to not only your childlike heart, but to the children, the actual literal children in your life and the, the children that you encounter 
on the 22nd of May because it's likely they're going to have a very profound influence um, and uh, maybe even sort of guide you or be some sort of oracle or omen for you um, going forward into your future. Thank you, Aquarius. Now, Pisces, Pisces rising, sun or moon people, the energy of the, uh, the Pluto trine to the sun in Gemini is forming in your fourth house. Now, I'm excited about this. This is happening on the 22nd of May. If you've got planets around two degrees of Gemini, you're going to feel this very strongly. Um, this has to do with your home life and domestic life. Pisces, if you've been having struggles or stuck in a rut domestically, this is an energy for turning things around. Maybe you've had a problem with your plumbing. This is an energy that can fi help you find the answer, why that tap's always leaking or why there's an issue always with your you know, toilet and you're always having to call the plumber. Um, Pluto trying to the sun here can illuminate what the issue is and help you find answers. Um, this is just an example. If there's a problem with your home, you can renovate it, restore it, change it and empower it to not be a problem anymore literally with your home some of you Pisces people might discover um, your dream home under this energy you might be flicking through the pages of the newspaper or realestate.com or something and you might find the house of your dreams and this is an energy for setting goals and being able to achieve it so you find that dream house you find that you know maybe dream lounge suite or you know curtains or whatever it is something domestic something related to your home and you can really um, start taking action to achieving it maybe you go and get a loan um, and it's supported under this energy maybe you know you put down a deposit on that couch that you want to buy um, and you know in time over a couple of more payments you're able to pay it off and buy it it's about setting goals that ultimately you will achieve regarding home land domestic life um, property and real estate very very exciting now if you're a keen gardener this is a positive energy for you to um, to see uh, a lot of growth happen in your garden so I'd get out there and start planting or you know um, it's getting near winter in Australia we don't do as much planting at this time but start maybe planning for what you're going to do in the spring and you know buy those bulbs now or buy that bare rooted rose now for your garden what you initiate under this energy will turn into something beneficial and powerful and beautiful in the long run and that includes what you're doing in your garden or what you plan to do in your garden under this energy as well if you run a business from home pisces it can stand to be blessed under this energy so you might get some, you know, an influx of, of clients because of um, this energy that's forming. You might uh, encounter some benevolent person who promotes your home-based business or maybe it's an inherited family business that you're running. Whatever the case, um, home-based businesses, um, inherited family businesses are all seen from the fourth house. And if you are involved in such, you might encounter a powerful person who changes um, the course of your business life. It can also be a powerful matriarch. Now, usually I'd say a, a, a masculine energy, but here in the fourth house, we're looking at matriarchal energy. But it's a, usually it'll be a matriarch who wears the pants, you know. It could be an actual physical, like, mother or grandmother who runs the show, or it could be... Um, a woman in a powerful position such as a female boss or um, you know somebody who's been like a, a, a female benefactor in your life like a, a mother figure to you in some way but they're powerful Pluto trying to the sun in the fourth house they step in and and create an opportunity of blessing for you uh, an opportunity to restore you in in some area of life uh, an opportunity to bless you so that's uh, definitely on the cards with this type of energy as well. Um, somebody's going to give you a, a chance to rise up in the world. And even, um, you know, you might find that this is an energy for overcoming uh, negative emotions as well. Um, anxiety, depression, sadness can be powerfully overcome. You might find a solution. You might read a book that 
that lifts you up. You might, um, you know, spend some time with a friend who just helps, you know, get you out of the dumps. Um, this is an energy for transforming a low level emotional situation um, because Pluto is transformative and restorative and the sun represents our joy. So in the house of emotion, if you've been struggling emotionally, this is a time where there, there can be lasting and beneficial change that comes into your life, Pisces. Very, very exciting. The foundation of who you are can go through a big empowerment process. And I will point out, Pisces, that this is the first time Pluto has ever trined the sun, it's a powerful combination, in your fourth house, in your whole life. And it's going to be this way for the next 20 years that Pluto will be trining the sun every year annually in your fourth house. So it stands to reason, Pisces, that fourth house things over the next 20 years in your life are going to be significantly transformed and changed in a powerful, beautiful way. Your emotional life, your home life, your domestic life, the kinds of houses you're living in, the ability for you to invest in real estate and property and have success from that, the ability to set goals around property and real estate um, and goals around emotional well-being can all all be transformed um, starting this week and for the next 20 years so I'm excited for you Pisces this is a foundational area of life and it stands to be thoroughly blessed by this combination occurring and beginning this week Aries rising, Aries sun and Aries moon people. Well, for Aries friends, the energy of Pluto trying to the sun is occurring in the third house. On the 22nd of May, this is forming. And if you have planets or points at two degrees of Gemini, you're going to feel it all the more. So this is a, an energy for uh, having a strong sense of willpower and an ability to totally restore and transform our life and in this case it's very much directed at how you're thinking if you've had thinking processes that were very negative very critical you know of, of the self or of other people or just always you know glass half empty kind of approach to your thinking Aries Pluto trying to the Sun here is going to change the way you think in a lasting way you can transform how you think you can transform your mindset and your worldview because of this energy forming this is an energy that is going to um, change how you think um, for the next 20 years actually because this is the first time that, this, that Pluto has trined the sun in your third house in your whole life and it's going to last for the next 20 years. So your thinking is going to change and it's going to change for good. Very, very powerful. This is an energy that can really bless your siblings, your relatives and your neighbors as well. So a gift to your, your relatives this is, or particularly your, your siblings, their lives are going to be benefited and blessed um, through Pluto making a trine to your third house and the sun there. But your ability to communicate is also enhanced and empowered, my friends, as well. So if you need to this week write an important email or call somebody with an important message or put a, an important journal article that you've written out there for the world to see or make a very important you know, Instagram post, this is the week to do it. If you've been sort of sitting on your laurels before you, you know, hit send or put that Instagram post up, this week is the week to make it happen because Pluto trying to the sun here is going to give you a level of success around that email or that post or that speech you've got to make, whatever, that you wouldn't otherwise get. So blessing is waiting for you in social media and communication realms. Also advertising and marketing. It's a great week to start some sort of advertising campaign or marketing campaign. It's a great week to, you know, put a heap of stuff on Facebook buy swap and sell you'll have a lot of success with your sales because of that because all of these things relate to the third house that Pluto through this time is empowering so um, if you have a message to give if you've got a webinar you want to create this is the week I keep listing all these different things that can be empowered through this combination now if you run your own business my beautiful Aries friends a lot of you Aries people do run your own businesses um, then your own business, your, your you know, self-made business, your entrepreneurial endeavor can be very much empowered and enhanced by this energy also. 
Pluto is going to give you uh, the ability to sort of set some goals for your business and see them achieved in time, not just, you know, instantaneously. But if you set a goal and then take positive action towards manifesting that goal, it's going to go from strength to strength. Some of you might um, encounter um, or, or have a sibling in your life that does something to powerfully bless your life. Um, this is an energy of usually a masculine sibling um, that is a, a, becomes a person of powerful impact in your life under this energy. So maybe a sibling rings you up and say, hey, you, I know you were looking for a promotion. I found this job on my internet search and I thought it sounded like you. And because of that contact, boom, away you go with the, the you know, dream job you've always wanted. Um, it could also look like, you know, maybe a, a sibling has, knows a, a particular physician or a doctor that can be a, a blessing for you in a circumstance you're facing and they let you know about this person. So, it, you know, things like that. In some way, a sibling is going to be a powerful influence for good in your life, for blessing in your life. Also, just finally, um, Aries, I see you making some change and really um, altering the direction of maybe... Um, a skill set that you have maybe you've always you've been learning piano and you've always played classical Mozart um, this week you might get inspired to make a, a complete redirectioning and you move away from playing Mozart to playing jazz and suddenly it brings more success into your life you know some skill set some trade some craft some capacity that you have in terms of talents um, is redirectioned this week for some reason and it is for your higher good so that also goes for any businesses that you run there might be a significant change that occurs in your business this week that ultimately brings more blessing your way very excited to share that with you Aries Taurus, Taurus rising sun and moon people, what a week you're in for with all the energy that's unfolding in your first house, Taurus. Boom, it's going to be huge, huge week of change for you, huge week, I would say, of blessing for you as well. But what we're really looking at in the All Signs Breakdown this week for Taurus is the trine from Pluto to the sun in your second house. If you have planets or points around two degrees of Gemini, sun or moon there, um, or uh, yeah, sun or moon in, in Gemini and you're a Taurus rising person, or if you're a, a Taurus sun or moon person just generally as well, this is going to impact in a benevolent way your second house. This is an energy for having a strong capacity to change your material circumstances, Taurus. You have um, just, just an ability to attract good material things to you. Let's say you've always wanted a velvet quilt, but you couldn't find one online anywhere to buy. Boom, this week you find it. It's affordable. You've always wanted a velvet quilt. Boom, it's there. You buy it. You've got it. You can attract what you want materially in, um, in the resources that you have and also the money that you have this week. Also, if you've been in a state of debt, um, or struggling with money, struggling to pay the bills. This is a week where Pluto trying to the sun can change your circumstances entirely. And suddenly you have the ability to pay the bills or you have the ability to start to resolve that debt or you set the wheels in motion this week to pay off a debt and boom, it's all sorted within a matter of time. Pluto has not ever trined the sun in your second house in your life thus far. This is the first time and it's going to go on for the next 20 years that Pluto will trine the sun every year in your second house. So over the next 20 years, Taurus, you are going to be able, you know, be very benefited by this energy to change your material circumstances for the good, to profit out of difficult situations to change and, and restore and, and transform your financial situation. So what do you need to start this week, um, my beautiful Taurus friends, to make things happen? Well, whatever you initiate now will start to unfold um, more and more and more over the next 20 years to get you to a material state in life um, that is of benevolence, that might be uh, what you aspire to so like use your visioning processes where do you hope to be in 20 years time materially um, set the wheels in motion now 
and you're going to see it grow and flourish and blossom over the next 20 years. This is an energy for setting goals and being able to achieve it, not instantaneously, but in time. Um, it's, a, like I said, an energy for attracting what you want ultimately, but you've got to know what it is you want in the material realm. Fortunately, most Taurus people do know what they want in the material realm, and this is an energy to help you achieve it, my friends. So I can see some important person supporting you or empowering you um, with financial advice now. Um, maybe it's a, a bank manager or a financial advisor. That's what this energy is all about. Powerful people who are related to money and resources coming into your life to guide you, help you and direct you in the right direction. So if you've never spoken with a financial advisor, this would be a good week to do so. If you need to speak to the bank about maybe a repayment plan or um, how to deal better with your money, this is the week to do that as well. It's also an energy, Taurus, for making big and lasting changes to your budget. So sit down and work out where the money goes and how you deal with it. You will find that the changes you make to your budget are going to be um, very beneficial in the long run. Finally, this is the house of our face. And you can make changes to your face that bless you. You know, this is, Pluto is surgery, you know, and um, making an aspect to the sun here in the second house can help you to really shine by having some sort of surgery. Maybe you need wisdom teeth removed. Maybe um, there's something wrong with your nose and you need to have your nose restructured or something. In doing that, in having some sort of facial surgery, Pluto, you are empowered in a, in a really dynamic way this week. So for those of you who've got some sort of surgery, um, lined up on their face, their hair, their teeth, their head in some capacity, um, you can really bring a lot of powerful change for the better into your life, I would add as well. So my dear friends, this is the end of the video. Thank you for sticking with me right to the end. Um, I hope that this beautiful trine from Pluto to the Sun is empowering for you. First time that it's occurring in Gemini. Um, I hope that it takes you forward for the next 20 years and brings you to a place of great abundance and blessing. I'll catch you with another Astro Weather Report next week. Until then, be blessed.